Welcome back to Block TV. It's time now for stress test. And in the crypto sphere, the two biggest fears still seem to be fear and greed. Although in this market, I think it may be more fear. But with emotion still running the show, there's a serious need for the industry to develop more accurate metrics. And fortunately, we have with us a person who can help us to understand things from a new and different perspective. Of course, I'm talking about Joshua Frank from the Thai. Josh, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, so kick us off this week. It's looking pretty grim across the board. The color red is splashed all over, but let's not just get uh, caught up in the fear. Let's actually break it down by the numbers. Uh, Joshua, starting off this week, I know you've got some interesting news on tweet volumes getting destroyed across the board. What can you tell us? Yeah, so we like to think of tweet volume as a, as a really good measure of retail interest in the space. Uh, and, and, and we had seen tweet volumes begin to recover on a lot of assets, you know, after basically dropping in free fall from late 2017 to, uh, you know, 2018, we, we had begun to see kind of tweet volumes pick up, uh, but that, that trend has not continued. Um, these are, these are the, you know, the four largest altcoins other than Tether. Um, and, and you can see, you know, the decline in tweet volume across the board, you know, Ethereum down 68%, which is actually the best performing of the major altcoins, you know, being down 68%, XRP down 78%, Bitcoin Cash down 86.5%, Litecoin down 78.4%. And I just pulled up Tron on my screen, I think it was down 95%. Uh, and, and here's the chart of, you know, Bitcoin as well. What we're seeing basically across the board is just an absolute massacre as it relates to the number of people talking about digital assets on Twitter and the, the number of raw tweets that we're seeing from those individuals, which to me is a is a is a huge sign of, of declining interest in the asset. I mean, you can see here, you know, from about May to late July, we did see a, a big pickup, which was exciting and in, in, in tweet volume as the price of Bitcoin had had rebounded to around $14,000. Uh, but that but that hasn't lasted. I mean, we're, we're basically at all time lows uh, since 2017 as, as it relates to tweet volume. So so, you know, a big a big, um, you know, big evidence of, of retail interest declining. And, you know, this is correlating with declining trading volumes across the board on, on major retail exchanges as well. Right. The picture there does look bleak, but I, not to sort of compound bad on bad, but as we look even within the tweet volume that does exist, I understand that the uh, long-term sentiment data within that is also headed towards the, uh, the red, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So... To compound the bad on top of the bad, the the conversations that people having are having on on Twitter are increasingly going negative. So the way that long term sentiment score works is it, it it looks at conversations over the last 50 days versus the previous 200. So if long term sentiment score is really positive, that's saying that hey, you know, conversations over basically the last month and a half are a lot more positive than they were over the last six or so months. And so we saw a a massive run up in long term sentiment score. Uh, which are those lines and, and the numbers on the right there where, you know, the, ma the five major coins had, you know, long term sentiment scores below around 50. But those started to, to go up, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning and, and throughout the summer. But we've begun to see a massive decline. So Bitcoin's long term sentiment score is technically still positive. So it's slightly above 50, but it's declined significantly from from 70.5 to about 59. And, and I think this was actually two days ago. I think it's down to 56. And if we look at coins like Litecoin, uh, Litecoin's long-term sentiment score was positive and it, it's declined by more than half. And what, what, the other thing we can see from this chart is, is those areas, uh, charts which are going up and down, that's 30-day price change. What we, what we saw was in April and May, you know, Bitcoin had this outsized return versus the rest of the market, uh, but it doesn't seem like that's happening anymore. So, you know, we saw this divergence in NV tweet ratio, which we had talked about before, where you know, Bitcoin was trading at a much higher multiple of its social activity versus its peers, which was kind of a sign of institutional interest. And, and while we're still seeing that, it doesn't seem to be as outsized as it was earlier this summer. Um, and, and, you know, at the same time, you know, tweet volumes are declining and, and the sentiment across the board is, is, is pretty bad. Yeah, it does seem uh, to be pretty bad. Now, just to make clear to our audiences as well, the graphs we're looking at there, and I only say this because we had such a significant dip yesterday, they're accurate as to about when, when uh, about yesterday. So those are longer dip. term. Th those are those are may have been two days ago, uh, mm -hmm. but that's a super long term metric. So it's right. not going to change that much in a day. The uh, next couple of charts are accurate as of about four or five p.m. 
uh, Eastern time yesterday, so right. after the dip had already occurred. Right, okay, so after that uh, dip, uh, once Z uh, Zuckerberg had already been grilled on the hill for a significant time, a little chance if that was indeed the impactor that had some impact. But now, uh, let's, let's take a pause for a second from all the doom and gloom, Josh, and maybe take a look at, I understand there was at least one coin that did manage to buck the trend yesterday in the whole crypto sphere and somehow saw a little bit of positive news. Yeah, uh, basic attention token bat had a <laughs> had a good day yesterday. The uh, true powerhouse in the I, industry, I, basic attention token. Yeah, I, look, I I don't know why, and I had I had multiple of the largest exchanges actually reach out to me asking for me to explain why it went up, and I said I, I literally have no idea. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I guess you know to to our credit, sentiment was actually really positive before uh, basic attention token went up. Uh, the, the words that are, were driving sentiment, I mean, there was no, you know, a lot of times we'll look at, you know, hey, what are the words and individual tweets that are driving this narrative? You know, the words were, you know, nothing was, there was no real story as to why it was going up. But you can see the blue line here is, is daily sentiment score. And that looks at conversation today versus the previous seven days. And we saw that daily sentiment score, you know, basically skyrocketed up from, you know, below, you know, around 30 to above 80 uh, prior to the run up. And, you know, while you saw a quick dip there, you know, it, it performed while everything else dropped about 10%. But I, I, I don't have a good explanation as to why this happened. Uh, I mean, if, if your viewers have one, uh, I'd love to hear it, but, but I don't have the narrative. All right. So that's a call to action to everyone out there viewing. Can you please explain to us what's up with basic attention token? Did they know something we don't? Are you the whale that's propping up the basic attention token market? We'd love to hear from you. That's an important one. All right. But as well, going back to uh, perhaps the slightly larger players in the sphere, can we take a look right now as of the time of filming where Bitcoin is standing? Because we did see as finally yesterday, the price did settle around that seven and a half mark. We've been hovering around there. What can you tell us of where sentiment is standing right now? Sure. So um, this is actually directly on our site in real time. So if you go to the Tide.io and you look at Bitcoin and go, go full screen on uh, full screen on the trading view chart with this this full screen button on the top right, you can see this live. But so this is five minute five minute data here. So this is the last uh, this is the last few days on on Bitcoin, and we saw basically starting at around uh, noon yesterday. Uh, or, or noon on the 22nd, rather, Bitcoin's uh, long-term sentiment, or, or sorry, daily sentiment score uh, had begun to decline. And, and, you know, we see here on the 23rd uh, at uh, about 6.35 a.m. Uh, or 6.45 a.m. Eastern, that's when the decline happened. So Bitcoin uh, short-term or daily sentiment score had declined from about 65 to 45 then. Uh, and since the decline, it, it stayed relatively negative. So the conversations, you know, over the last 24 hours continue to you know, trail or be more negative than those uh, over the previous seven days. And at the same time, this this blue line here is tweet volume. And we saw tweet volume spike from about 21,000 tweets uh, to to over 32,000. So at least the conversations are coming back. Um, <laughs> but 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 the sentiment is is not looking great. Yeah, nothing like having a bunch of conversations about how badly your investments are performing. You know, I guess gets people if, talking. If it, but... if it means anything, if it means anything, we've actually found increasing conversations combined with low sentiment tends to lead upward price movement in the past. Um, so we'd, we'd want to see a more continued increase in conversations. We'd want this trend to last for, um, you know, a month. Uh, we'd want to see, you know, conversations over the last month being, you know, at a higher level than they were over the last six months on average, combined with declining sentiment. But if, but if that does happen, that does actually tend to lead upwards price movement. So what we found is when when upward when when high sentiment and, and high tweet volumes coincide, that actually tends to lead downwards price movement because the value of the signal is no longer there. So so high tweet volume with declining sentiment could be a good thing, but we haven't seen that high tweet volume for long enough. I mean, you know, low tweet volume and low sentiment is, is overall the worst thing you could possibly have. Uh, playing into the old uh, media adage, all news is good news. I mean, uh, it seems to be ever true in the crypto sphere as anywhere else, but as well, and to move a little bit away from the data just for a moment, Josh, and you know, I mean, there you are, you're, you're based out of New York and you, you uh, sort of have a, a finger on the pulse of the, the business world there. I understand that it, it looks a little bleak from where you're looking at, getting outside the, the sentiment on Twitter and talking about the sentiment and what you're seeing. Uh, what can you sort of tell us about uh, the sort of crypto business world there as you're seeing it? 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think people are really struggling. I think a lot of people that had raised venture funding and had raised these large rounds, you know, during the you know the 2017 run up or right after, you know, after you know prices had declined from twenty thousand dollars, but but interest in the market was was really high. You know, a lot of these people had gone out and raised tremendous amounts of capital. Uh, and it and it built businesses on the back of that. So I'm talking about picks and shovels businesses, whether they're maybe exchanges or data companies or news sites uh, to kind of support the industry. And so, you know, they had raised at kind of this high. So a lot of them brought in two, five, ten million dollars. Um, but but what's happened is when when you raise a venture round, a lot of times you're raising for about 18 months. So they're coming kind of towards the end of those 18 months and they haven't seen you know significant revenues yet uh, enough to support the business. Uh, and, and, you know, while some of these companies are raising, you know, secondary rounds of venture, you know, capital, a lot of them aren't able to and their expenses far outweigh their revenue. And I think what we're going to see is a is a significant, you know, washout and, and turnover of and this happens in any industry. Right. This isn't just crypto specifically, but but a, but a huge washout and turnover of businesses within the space. I think that upwards of 50 percent of the existing businesses, you know, whether it be news outlets or, or, or data companies or technology companies or consulting firms uh, are going to are going to go out of business because the, you know, the support is just not there for them. I mean, if you look at data firms, for example, uh, if you look at the on chain data space, I mean, you have, you know, 10 to 20 companies that are competing here, but the funds within the space, you know, funds are struggling and funds don't have any capital. So the funds can't afford their data. So you have 20 firms competing for 20 customers that can't afford more than a thousand bucks a month, uh, you know, on, on, in, in some of these different verticals. And I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of these firms wash out because the demand is just not there for their services yet. And, and while in the long term, it may be there, you know, they just don't have the support right now. Yeah, certainly. It sounds like it's a little bit tough all over. People uh, need to be careful out there because it's a wild west and it's dog eat dog. I'm going to run out of metaphors and idioms to keep throwing. So I'll end it there and say thank you so much to Joshua Frank, co-founder of The Tie, for bringing us this critical data as you do every week. Looking forward to hearing next week on an update. And please, this time, can you bring us some green? Hopefully more I'm sick of the red. I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. All right. Please, please, so, please, please. Green. Please to everyone. everyone. All right, Joshua, bye. thanks so much Not for being with advice. us. And stay with us at <laughs> blocktv.com for all the latest news and information. I'm Asher Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.